thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name. That ministry was part of Tone and the Detroit Collective and different ministry gifts throughout our city. And what a blessing they've been. First service and now this service. What a, what a blessing from the Lord. And this morning, that the whole worship really is goes right in line with the theme of the message this morning. And the theme goes way back to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 when there was some tough stuff happening in Israel. This is God's place. But things were changing. Things had changed. And But thank God, God was in charge. God still had his eye on that, his covenant people. And the scripture says that that there was a king named Ahab. He was king of Israel. And the Bible said he was the seventh king of Israel and he was the wicked of all of them, the most evil king Israel ever had. And the scripture said that he provoked God more than any other king had ever provoked God. You don't provoke God to anger, he, he provoked God. And the Bible says that his father was king before him, Emri, and he did evil, but his son did even more evil. And the scripture says he kind of heard about this woman in Siron, the Phoenician area, and thought it would be a good arranged marriage. If he could bring these two together, it would be good militarily, it would be good commercially, it would be good for transfer, trans, uh, uh, transformation and, and people... Um, just uh, moving things along and the roads and so he, he thought we'd bring Ahab and Jezebel together. But you, how many people know that it might look good, it might feel good, but when you're, the scripture says, be not yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has light with darkness? What fellowship has God's people with the devil, he even says. And then he went out from among them, he said, um, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And I'll be your father and you'll be my children. But this marriage was put together and Jezebel went right to work. She began with her husband, Ahab, putting up shrines and altars to Baal, crossed Israel. And the whole nation was beginning to turn to the worship of Baal. They knew Jehovah God and probably some were thinking, well, we love the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We love the Creator. We love the God of Moses. We love that God, but you know what? It's okay to have Baal too. We could, we could go along with Jezebel. The Bible said Jezebel had, had uh, 450 prophets. Another 450 prophets with Asherah. This other, this other God that she erected was like a, like a big poles throughout Israel that they gave worship to, the God of fertility the God of light. And um, so some of the people were kind of beginning to blend in. How many people know that, you know the story, you can't kill a frog, throwing him in hot water, he'll jump out. But if you could, you could just boil him slowly, lukewarm him to death. And that's what culture tries to do. The gods of Baal are all around us. And over time, we don't even know it's a slippery slope. And we're even maybe taking on belief systems that are foreign to the original design of God, foreign to God's ways and God's laws, and we don't know it. But the remedy was for the wickedest king and the wickedest wife of the king, Princess Jezebel, God had a prophet named Elijah. Probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, anointings of God on a man, Elijah. And Elijah came forth anointed by the power of the Lord. God was on him. And Elijah stood up to Ahab, stood up to the gods of Baal. And I'll tell you, Jezebel hated that man. Ahab hated that man. And the prophets, those false prophets that they were paying to, the Bible says, because Elijah wanted to do a big showdown. How many people know that sometimes it's, it's time for a divine showdown? 
which, is, which God is the true God? The God of Baal or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The God of the Bible, the Christ of the Bible, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And every now and then, God needs a good showdown in our lives. I think God needs a great showdown in America. Needs a good showdown in the church. Needs a good showdown in your circumstances, in your families, and in your life. And some God, God, some God, God divines a divine sh- showdown. And they got to remember, the God of Baal was noted for rain. He was noted for rain and fire and other areas, but that was his big thing, rain. And God told Elijah to pray now to stop the rain. And that's how big our God is. I'm going to ask you a question. Who's bigger, the devil or God? Okay, remember that. Because the devil doesn't come with a pitchfork and red clothes on and horns. He comes sneaky. He comes deceptfully into society. It feels good. It looks good. Oh, I can go along with that. That seems all right. But it's totally foreign to the original design of our creator and his ways. And Elijah prayed and he, God said, I want to pray, stop the rain. So when this showdown was happening, when Elijah met Ahab, and Ahab saw Elijah and he said, here comes the troublemaker, troubling all of Israel. And that's what the, that's what the world says about me and you every now and then. The church, those Bible thumpers, if we can get them, if we can get them out of this area, out of government, out of business, out of commerce, out of education, if we can get them, get them out of the ideologies of what the marriage is supposed to be, what families are supposed to, we need to get these, and that's the Baal gods, that's the demonic powers that want to substitute the true and living God in our nation, in your home, and in the church. It's a substitute God. And Elijah looked at him, he says, I'm not the troublemaker, you're the troublemaker. You've troubled Israel. By not honoring the commandments of God, you've troubled all of Israel. It says that right in the Bible there, Deuteronomy. He said that right there, you've troubled Israel because in, the, in your father's house, you've, you've forsaken the commandments of the Lord God and followed Baals. That's what you've done. You're the one that's brought trouble on Israel. See, God said when people begin to forsake God and begin to bring other gods in, and bow to idols and bow to theologies and ideologies and philosophies that are foreign to God. The Bible says the heavens will be brass. He will shut the rain off over the land. And that's what God did. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, the heavens will be like brass, there'll be no rain. He shut it down because of the wicked king Ahab and the wicked queen um, Jezebel and how they polluted the land with demonic demonic theology and ideologies and philosophies and, and sin and wickedness. And, and the interesting thing is, he said, we need to have a showdown. Get all your prophets, your 850 prophets of Asherah and Baal, and let's go to Mark Carmel, Mount Carmel. And on Mount Carmel, we're going to have a divine showdown. And I love this because the scripture says that He gets all Israel there and he says to Israel, why halt ye between two opinions? He's talking not only to Jezebel and Ahab, he's talking to all of Israel. Why are you double-minded with the God of Baal and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Why are you got one foot in, one foot out? Why are you waffling? Why are you hopping one minute here and hopping the next minute there? If the Lord be, if if Baal be God, follow Baal. If God be God, follow God. But none of this, I believe that and I believe this and as pastors and preachers, we have to do the job to bring the word of the Lord to God's people. Every week, every day, we need to be giving the word of the Lord. Can I hear a good amen to somebody? Because the Bible talks about that. Paul Paul admonished Timothy, preach the word. He admonished Timothy, preach the word, the full counsel of God. Be ready in season, out of season. Convince, rebuke, 
exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come where they will not endure sound teaching but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up from themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from truth and turn aside to fables that's our day right now that's why we have to give the word of the Lord can I hear a good amen somebody So he's telling his people, how long will you limp between two opinions? Two opinions. And he put that altar up there and all all the prophets of Baal, he said, now cry out to you, the God that answers by fire, he will be the true God we worship. And they all agreed. Baal agreed and Israel agreed. All the people that were waffling, they agreed. And they had prayed for six hours, at least six hours. They prayed to the gods of Baal to bring fire. They cut themselves. They did all kind of things to provoke the god Baal to bring fire and nothing happened because he's a false god. He's a false god. And no matter what's going on in our world today, the gods of Baal that are out there spewing out their fear and the ideologies and and how they've twisted the ways of God and God's original tent for birth and product, reproduction and what God's original tent for marriage and children and gender and how they perverted the system. Don't you think God's not here? God's, in the, God's big and he's bigger than Baal. Come on, church. He's bigger than the devil. He's bigger than those ideologies. He's bigger than it. He's bigger than it. And then... I love what Elijah did because the Bible says in verse 30 of chapter 18, 1 Kings 18, then Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 18, 30, it might be on the screen there, then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came, they came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord which had been torn down. Maybe that's where we first need to start, each one of us, repair some altars in our life. Repair the altars of holiness and integrity and character morality you know maybe we need to repair the altars of faith and love truth the altars of prayer my house should be called the house of prayer the first service I felt I said it feels like the Lord's come in here and and move you know through some tables over in the temple he said my house should be called the house of prayer and let him do that and he repaired the altar Lord repair the altar in Oakland repair the altar in my heart Repair the altar in our hearts. And Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come to him, saying, Your name shall be Israel. He just, such an honor of God, this prophet. He walked with God. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it large enough to hold two sheaves of seed. And he arranged the wood, cut the bowl in pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said, Fill up. Fill four jars, large jars with water and pour on the offering of the wood. Do it again, he said, he said, and they did it. Do it again the third time, he ordered, and they did it the third time. And water ran down the altar, even filled the trenches. And at the time of sacrifice, everybody say the time of sacrifice. There was an evening sacrifice that had been done away with. He started restoring God's sacrifices things that would honor God. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, or Jacob, let it be known to you, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you are the Lord God, and that you are turning their hearts back again, Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil, and also licked up all the water in the trench. Then when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate, cried, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. Then Elijah commanded them, seize the prophets of Baal, don't let anyone get away, seize them. And Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered them there. Now aren't you glad we don't slaughter but we can slaughter the demonic powers in Jesus' name and leave the rest in God's hands. We don't, we, don't, we don't kill in our name. We don't do that, so let's get that. But, but I want you to see what God did. He said, Lord, you're turning their hearts back. You are the God that 
are turning back hearts again. Turn back the hearts of your people to serve God full-heartedly. Come out of compromise. Come out of, why are you halting between two opinions? If God be God, the God of the Bible, and if he's true, then serve him with all your heart. If he's not, then go ahead, serve the world. Serve the God of Baal. Do what the world tells you to do and dance to their music. But he is the true God. Can I hear a good amen? He is the true God. And God answered by fire. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe that's what we're in right now. There's some, I believe there's a, a divine showdown that's happening right now. Good versus God versus the devil. God's way or, or, or Baal's way. It's not good and evil because that's in the garden. It was the, the knowledge of good and evil. But literally, it's, it's, it's God or Belial, the devil. His thoughts, his mind or the subverter, the substitute. The one that wants to substitute God and, and take God and then put, his, put all of his ideologies and lies to destroy God's ways and God's people. That's what he wants to do right now. And what's happened the last five years blows everybody away. When we think of reproductive rights, when we think of the rights of the believer, how many people know that as rights of believer, we have, we have a right to decide where we're gonna spend eternity. We have rights as believers. When you have a right to choose life or death, blessing or cursing, we have the right to choose heaven or hell. And God will back our decisions. Deuteronomy 30 says, Today I call before you heaven and earth as a witness against you. I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. God says, choose life that you and your children may live. I love that. He gives us the right to choose. And reproduction rights, this is, reproduction rights have always been God's will. His reproductions in Genesis, when he blessed the man and the woman and he brought them together in holy marriage before God, and he said now he blessed them, he said be fruitful and multiply. That's reproduction rights. Can I hear a good amen, somebody? That's God's rights right there. That's God's rights. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Reproduction rights is when another human life has begun. It's the right for another human life to begin. Possibly the clearest declaration of God's heart on the matter is Jeremiah 1. The word of the Lord came to me before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. That's God's reproduction of life. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you. Praise the Lord. Before he formed, I'm hearing some background, before he formed any of us in the womb, he knew us. No human has the right to destroy a developing child who God already knows in the womb or before he was ever born. Never, never. Praise God. Let me tell you what the devil's really after. The devil's been always been after seed. He's always been after the seed. In Genesis 3, the first thing he did, Genesis said, I'm coming after the seed. The seed of the woman shall bruise his heel. But there's a seed coming. And that's why the devil was always killing babies in the Old Testament, even, even towards the New Testament, because Jesus was coming, so we had the little babies killed. But what the really devil's after, he's after the seed before it gets out. And Je uh, Revelations 12 says, when the baby came out, he was there to take the baby. But God called that baby up to him, blessed him and kept him. God, the devil's after the seed because he knows a seed is coming into this earth. A seed. The scripture says, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, your seed, and your daughters, your seed shall prophesy with the power of Elijah. And your young men are going to have some divine dreams and stand up to Baal. And your women are going to stand up with the power of God. And your older men are going to dream dreams. He's after a seed that's coming. The seed that's baptized in the Holy Spirit. The scripture says in the, in the day, the last days before the, the great and terrible day of the Lord, the spirit of Elijah is going to come into the, the earth. The spirit of Elijah is coming on the church. He's going to turn hearts back to God. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what your friends are saying. Choose you this day who you will serve. You can go down the slippery slope and listen to them. 
Or you could say, I'm making my decision. Who are you going to serve? Who are we going to serve? But as for you and me in our house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going we're to acknowledge him as the Lord God. And thank God for that righteous seed, the anointing. Because I'm, I'm sending Elijah and he's going to turn hearts back to God. Fully back to God. Fully back to God 1,000%. And he's going to turn their hearts towards children. And he's going to turn the children's back to their fathers. Come on, dads. Thank God. The Spirit of God's moving on us fathers. Moving on us fathers. We're we're closing the gaps. We're closing the gaps. What the devil's been able to do to children in the last 20 years has been, it's been a terrible thing behind closed doors, what's going on. All the things that are going on in the name of Baal, in the name of ideologies that are not right. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God that he's given us that right. Exposing children to the unthinkable things, the offense of children. But he says, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Can I hear a good amen, somebody? Thank the Lord. Praise God. Holy Spirit, I thank you for helping me. When we get into these areas here, I know that it could offend some people. I'm not, I want the Holy Spirit to offend me anytime he wants to offend me when I need to be offending. We're gonna serve the God of the Bible. See, we could praise God and we could dance and we gotta sing, but if our belief systems are getting watered down by Jezebel or by Baal, or by ideologies, and we got to come out from, we got to be, we got to be, what am I doing? What am I thinking life? See, your body does not belong to you. If you're a believer, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God. You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body doesn't belong to you. My Bible and your Bible, your Bible says this in Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice to God. Your will. What does your word say for my body? Holy and acceptable unto God, which is the proper and true way to worship God. He says, my body present to God. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. My Bible, your Bible says in Hebrews 13, 4, the marriage bed is undefiled. That's a beautiful scripture, which means that, and then he goes on to say, which means that sexual intimacy should be reserved for married couples kept from immorality and sexual sin. Sexual relationships are reserved exclusively for the covenant of marriage. Come on, let's get back to the word of God. Let's get back. Baal has gotten in here, and you almost believe it. You almost believe it, that this thing is old-fashioned now. Go back to it. Admit it's wrong. Admit it's sin. Admit it's against God's way. Marriage bed is undefiled. Don't defile it with adultery and fornication and immorality. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Word of God says. It's, It's a powerful thing. God wants to bless you in marriage. So people live together now because they can have sex and do their thing and never have a covenant before God. Get married. Get the blessing. Get God blessing you, multiplying you. Do you know that God's going to come on you with covenant favor when you join in marriage and do that before God? There's a blessing. My son Jonathan, when he got married to Bianca, his stock rose 1,000%. I couldn't believe the favor that God hit my son when he got married to the right woman, a woman that loved God. Same with Dominic and what their life's done. They got married before God in covenant with God. And God backs that covenant with promises. He does, my friend. He does, my friend. And he wants that for you. He wants the best for you. He cares about you more than you even realize. He wants to send you a beautiful wife and a a, a wonderful husband that loves God, that will raise your children to know God. That's the best gift you can get for your children. A godly husband, women, and a godly wife, husbands, men. That's the best thing you give for God. Praise the Lord. 
That's what the word says. I love that. Hebrews 13, 4 says, marriage should be honored by all. The marriage bed kept pure. God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Do you want God to judge that, judge you for that? Come out from among that stuff. Come out from among Baal and what the world says is acceptable. The world says, if it feels good, go ahead, you could do it. That's all old fashioned. God said, it's not, your body's not your own. Your rights you lost at the cross. When you go into the military, the first thing they do is says, you have no rights. The United States Army, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, Navy, you now are at our command. Now we love God and we salute God and we worship and God loves us and cares for us, but he's Lord. He's Lord God Almighty and I bow before him. Not my will, but thine will. And I get away from his will, the Holy Ghost is gonna hit me. Say, get your bad self back to where you belong with your thinking. Sometimes you and I gotta do that to our own selves. Look yourself in the mirror and say, Dominic, don't. Flesh, no. Dominic, you know better. Don't go there. Don't go here. Don't go there. No, not with that friend. Not with that person. No, where's that going to lead me? No, no, and no. There's Baal and there's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The false with the true. I'm not going to be sucked down the river by the culture. It's all around us. Asherah gods, our poles are all over them. Everything they say you could do. Baal's all around you. It's a concrete decision that we make see some of us once were like that first corinthians 6 don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of god those that violate god not saying those that make a mistake from we all fail from time to time but those that are living in these lifestyles and don't repent and don't turn from it the scripture says you will not inherit the kingdom of god you're wondering why where's god's but he says don't fool yourself Those who indulge in sexual sin, who worship idols, commit adultery, are male prostitutes, practice homosexuality, are thieves, greedy people, drunkards, abusive or cheat people. None of these people inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you once were like that, but you've been cleansed now. You've been made holy now. You were made right with God by calling on Jesus Christ and by the spirit of the living God. You've come out from among them. You're separated. Your gods, let them, let them come by fire. The whole idea is today, Lord, we're rebuilding altars and let the sacrifice of fire consume my heart. Consume the church, Lord. Consume us, Lord God. The scripture even talks about Romans chapter one that God's anger angry is released. He's provoked because of the way society, because of the way man has twisted his original design, Romans 1.18, but God showed his anger from heaven against all wickedness. Wicked literally means twisting, twisting my original design. Who suppressed the truth by wickedness. Do you know that many people know the truth? They know it inwardly, God instinctively puts it inside them, just like a butterfly will fly thousands of miles to migrate. Who gets in there? Instinctively, God put it in the butterfly. And God put good and evil instinctively inside of man. Who put that there? God put that instinctively inside of man. And it says here, it's, it, says, it says right here, for they know the truth about God because he's made it obvious to them, but they suppress it. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature say so they have no excuse for not knowing God but they suppress him. No, I'm gonna do it my way, no! As a result, their minds become dark and confused, claiming to be wise, they instead become utter fools. You and I both know some of the things people are saying in these days from the top echelon are seem so foolish, so illogical, because their foolish minds have become dark and that's all that's coming out right now because of their Instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. It hits now the bodies. God has said, you want it? Go do it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not a 
I, I, you're a free moral agent. You want to go that way. I don't want that for you. I'll be here when you, when you at the end of your road. If, if you don't cry out, I'll be there. Verse 25, and they traded the truth about God for a lie, so they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. He is worthy of eternal praise. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged with sex with other women. Men, instead of having normal sexual relationships with women, burned in lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. As a result of this, of this sin, they suffered within themselves. They thought it foolish to acknowledge God, and he abandoned them to do their foolish thinking and let them do things they should never have done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, gossip. Their back backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand. They break their promises. They are heartless. They have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do it with them. This is truth. This is truth. This is truth. This is what's happening. And now we're seeing on, on national television things that are coming out what's been going on. Really, even that is the mercy of God to save people. When God brings out in the open what's been done secretly for decades, it's to judge, but it's also to give those people another chance of mercy. That when they're in that jail cell, wherever they're at, that God's still in that cell with them. And any of those guys or any of those girls, if they'll call on God, he will save them. He will forgive them. He will cleanse them and they still have an opportunity to go to heaven with him and be restored into the body of Christ, the family of God. The scripture says in Acts 3.19, repent and turn to God that your sins might be blotted out, that you might have times of refreshing in the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's why we repent. That's why we allow our sins to be blotted out so that we can have times of refreshing in the glorious presence of the living God. We get, we get to have that presence. Amen. So we, we thank God for that. I want you to make a concrete decision. God wants to save us. God wants to bless us. In Jesus' name. Could I hear a good amen, somebody? A good amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. God loves the gender he created you to be. Genesis 127 tells us that his creation was excellent in every way. He created them male and female, and he said they are very good. They are very good. Can I hear a good amen, somebody? Now, if you're ever struggling with gender identity, the Holy Spirit has an answer for you. Holy Spirit can help us all. For those who consider a sex change or surgery due to past woundedness or abuse, there's healing through Jesus Christ. He can heal you and put you back together again. That's the kind of God we serve. Look at Justin Bieber right now. I don't know if you've been watching that young man, but that man went through a horrific season in his life at the age of 13. Now he's 30. And now he's singing praises, came through this whole brokenness of, of the things that were done to him, through him, and maybe him to others, all of it, whatever. And a bunch of people that we don't even know by name, but we know him because he's, he's out in the limelight. But now he's doing worship sets and he's being healed by the Lord from all the garbage that that guy got involved in, and what was done to him at 13, what he was exposed to, being healed. And yesterday I heard from a prophet, I don't know if it's going to be true or false, he said, mark my word, that Justin Bieber will be the greatest worship leader the church has ever known. Now whether that happens or not, wouldn't it be just like Jesus to take someone broken in our world like our kids are, like our world is broken, that's been through pedophile and it's been through, been through uh, all the different things of, 
of, of the sexual issues that are going on, the brokenness that comes out of it, takes a man right out of that word. And this young man has a contrite heart, humble, not perfect, but what I, what I see of him, he's never blaming, he's never calling, he's just saying, I just needed Jesus. I just, and now God could use somebody broken and heal, and he could take a man like that back into our broken culture and heal our young generation all over again. I like that. That's the Jesus I know. I know you might not like that kind of religion, but according to Isaiah 61, the first thing Jesus said was, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The first thing he said was, heal the brokenhearted. You know, bring sight to those that lost vision. You know, heal, restore the bruised inside. Set the prisoner, the captive free, that they might be the planning of the Lord. That he might be glorified, trees of righteousness. And these people, after God gets through with them, healing their broken heart, mending them, making them new again, they're going to restore the broken places. They're going to raise up lost generations. They're going to go in there now and rebuild what's been taken down. Wasn't that you one day? That sure was me. I was a sinner. God found me. He saved me, redeemed me. Now he's thrown me back into the world to love the sinner and to save people that are broken and bruised with the power of Jehovah God, the name that's above every name for every lost young person every broken teenager, every broken single person. That's why Oakland Church is God's healing center. Come with your brokenness, come with your bruises. We got the Holy Spirit here and he'll put you all back together again. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jehovah God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, that's the difference between the church the true church and religion. Religion says you no good for nothing. Look what you did, you never amount to nothing. You can't fellowship with us because you did this, this, and that. God says, come on in. Let me heal you, let me restore you. Let me change you back to the original design that I have for your life. Give the Lord a good hand clap, somebody. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So I just want to encourage you on this Sunday, I've set before you life and death. Why halt you between two opinions? Make some decisions today. Make some wonderful, wonderful choices. The scripture says, he that sows to the flesh will reap corruption. He that sows to the spirit will reap life every after. The mind of the flesh is peace and liberty. The mind of the the mind of the spirit is peace and liberty. The mind of the flesh is, is corruption. It's not good. So we want, we want to be sowing into our love for God, sowing into the ways of God, the righteousness of God, the thoughts of God, planting into God, like DJ said, getting involved in God. Meet the kind of friends that, that will build you spiritually. The Bible says wrong company corrupts good people. Never forget that. The Bible says flee fornication. It didn't say play around with it. It said run from that thing. You're not strong enough in your own. You better run. He, he didn't say pray about it. He says flee fornication. Flee immorality. Flee wrong relationships. Get out of it. If it offends you, if the right hand offends you, cut it off. And say, God, I'm staying as close to you as I possibly can. I might have drifted here and I might have drifted here. But today, I'm choosing who's my God. And I want the world to know it. I want my girlfriends to know it. I want my coworkers to know it. I want my boyfriends to know it. I want my parents to know it. I want my office people to know it. I want my boss to know it. I want my customers to know it. That I'm a little bit different than the rest of you. I love you. You'll get the best service from any person that you've ever, that ever served you in business. I'll be the best person serving you, but I won't compromise. I'm gonna love the Lord my God. And you'll know when you start your dirty jokes, you get too far along, conviction will get all over your face because I'm one of them. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a hand clap. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father God, we just want to thank you today for everyone in this building. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for talking to people, loving people. Thank you, Lord God. That, that even through these words, you could be saving someone's life today. Thank you, Lord, that, that choices are being made today. 
Father God, decisions are being made today. Father, people are saying, I didn't see it, but now I see it so clearly. Thank you, God, for talking to me, arresting me this morning, speaking truth to me, Lord. The first thing you could say to the Lord, my friend, is say, forgive me, Lord. I've said it before. Lord, I missed it. I didn't see where I was going. I didn't see what I was doing, but that's wrong, and I'm not going to participate. I'm cutting it off now. I'm dealing with things right now, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. I'm turning to you. Your blood blots it out, that sin. And Lord, I can receive times of refreshing. I love you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. And my life is now in your hands, in Jesus' name. If that's you this morning, just stand to your feet. If that's you, God has spoken to you, and that's you, just stand up right where you are. Don't, you don't have to mince around. You don't have to play around. Don't worry who's around. God sees you, and you're doing this for the Lord. Say, Lord, today's my day, and I've got to make a new commitment. I'm coming out from among them. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be vacillating between two opinions. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love your word. I'm going to love your divine original intent for mankind in marriage, in our bodies, Lord, what you say about things. It's not what, I, what the world says, but what you say. You cover me. You want the best for me. You're protecting me. You want to bless me. You want to love me, Lord. When I follow your word, I get blessed by you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And if that's you this morning, I want you to come up to the altar. Just come right up here. I want to say a prayer over you. Just slip out of that seat. Say, excuse me. Excuse me. Me and God are doing business today. Excuse me. Excuse me. Me and God are doing business today. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Me and God are doing business today. Me and God are doing business today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lift up our hands to the Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for these. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for these beautiful people, Lord God. We love them, Lord. Father, we thank you. This is a no judgment zone. Father, this is a this is a this is a divine moment, Lord. This is a moment. This is a moment of reconciliation. This is a moment of restoration. This is a moment, Lord, where you're meeting them. Oh, Holy Spirit, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Take off all the shackles of maybe wasted days, wasted months, or even wasted years. And I'm asking, Lord, I'm asking that you redeem the time. I'm asking that you come with the gushing, rushing wind of the Holy Spirit. I'm asking that you meet them with the fire from the altars of God. I'm asking that the Holy Spirit's presence will touch them. May these be, they be, these be the firebrands of the new revival. May these be, these be the new ones that come forth glorified find the name of the Lord God. Maybe these the one that heal their generation. Maybe these one with the words of the Lord in their mouth and mouth and hearts. Maybe the, these be the ones prophesying and speaking on behalf of God. In Jesus name, we bless you. Lift your hands up. Say say this with me. Say, "Dear God, here I am. I'm coming back to you. Turning to you. Blot out my sins. Wipe them out so that I can have times of refreshing in your wonderful presence and just lift your hands to heaven and say thank you God thank you for loving me thank you for never giving up on me you were always there Lord in Jesus name let's worship him <laughs>